Hey guys, all right, so today I'm gonna to show you how to solve a word problem using a number line for elapsed time. So let's say one of your word problems is asking you to find the end time of a trip that someone is taking, but they give you a start time and the time that has passed. So what I like to do is I like to have my students make a chart. And then I want them to cut the chart in half and then into six. This chart is gonna represent the start time, time passed, and end time. And I say S-T-T-P-E-T, S-T-T-P-E-T, -E -T. start time, time passed, end time. Sometimes your word problems are gonna give you the start time, time passed, or the end time, but rarely will they give you all three. Usually there's gonna be one unknown. So let's say that in your word problem today, they give you a start time and the time that has passed. So say your trip that you take with your family is gonna start at 7.45. And they say that your trip will take three hours and 15 minutes. That's how I would write that down. The end time is the unknown. So what we're going to do today is we're gonna show you how to use a number line when identifying the end time. So I'd start by making a number line first. Because the start time is here, I'm gonna put the, that time right here. The end time is the unknown but we're gonna be able to make jumps today that represents the hours and minutes passed. Now, sometimes people use different kinds of jumps to represent hours and minutes. So we have mountains and hills. A mountain represented like this represents one hour and hills that represents minutes. And I'm gonna show you how we use hills and how we label them to represent how many minutes have passed. So let's start here. 7.45, always start with the largest interval of time and those are your hours. So we're gonna make three hour mountains. One, two, three. And I like to go in here and label just in case we forget. One, two, three hours. So starting at 7.45, we're gonna make three hour jumps, just changing the hour. 7.45, 8.45, Now, we are done with all of our hours. Now we're moving on to our minutes. Typically, I would have kids break this down into smaller intervals of time. So I'm gonna break it down into five minute jumps. I know that if I count by fives, it's five, 10, 15. So I'm gonna make three hills. One, two, three. And each one is gonna represent five minutes. So 10.45 plus five minutes will be 10.50. 10.50 plus five minutes is gonna be 10.55. 10.55 plus five minutes will be 11 o'clock. Now, I always make sure that I counted correctly. We needed three hours, one, two, three, check. And 15 minutes, five, 10, 15. Now that I know that I've used all of my time that has passed, I know that my end time is 11 o'clock.